Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Uncle Jed, old Amish Johnny never come back to pick up his $700,000. Here's that way. Can I have it? As an advance against my allowance? 50 cents a week, that'd take a while to pay back. I'm young. You ain't that young. <laughs> Besides, Honest John needs that money to help fight smog. You know, I'd like to throw my brain in it to fight against smog. Today ain't cause. They say what it'll take to whip it is brains and money. Well, betwixt us, we got it made, ain't we? <laughs> I reckon we got a leg up on it. So, I have a question for our students. Um, how can they best reduce their carbon footprint in their everyday lives? Because, I don't know if you understand, but you know regular cars, they put pollution into the air, which we breathe into our lungs, and it makes us sick. And he's invented a car that is electric, so it doesn't need gasoline. And that's like the future of our planet. And that's huge, you know? So, how can our students incorporate be aware of their environment and, and increase their carbon footprint on a regular basis. I'm sure. Well, yeah, I guess that your carbon footprint is pretty, it's not huge. <laughs> so, uh, so, unless you're driving like a, a big car, a big gasoline car or something, but um, certainly uh, vehicles are a huge source of uh, carbon. Um, electricity is. Uh, it's still a significant source of, of carbon. Uh, that's why we need to have sustainable electricity production as well as electric cars. Um, so, obviously, you know, to the degree that you can minimize your use of uh, electricity, that's, that would reduce your problem. Hey, boy, what have you done to that truck? Looks like the bull to set it on fire. Jethro, what'd you do? Unconverted this rascal to steam. You are looking at the answer to air pollution by automobile. The Jethro Bodine steam car. <coughs> <coughs> I, I have done perfected a clean engine. I'm going back inside. Let's all do that for this clean engine jokes us to death. <coughs> Honest John ain't gonna be needing his money no more now that I whipped the smog problem, so I use it to mass produce my steam car. How did Tesla come to fruition? Um, all, all of these stories are quite long stories, so I'm trying to uh, condense them to relatively short answers. Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, um, I've had a long standing interest in um, electric cars because I think that's um, the, the way to achieve sustainable transport. Um, and um, you know that's the original reason I came out to California was to study, to try to develop uh, energy storage mechanisms for, for electric vehicles. People think of factories too much like it's, it's some sort of photocopy machine. It just, it's just some boring thing that makes copies. But actually, it's vastly more complicated than the product that it, that it makes. I just talked to the president, and we won't be driving to Washington in your electric car. Just as well, Uncle Jeff. I never found an extension cord long enough to get us there. <laughs>
of child labor and African mining focus, focuses this morning on the tens of thousands of kids growing up literally without a childhood. We showed you yesterday how the mineral cobalt is most often unearthed in the Democratic Republic of Congo, also known as DRC. Many top electronic and electric vehicle companies need cobalt to help power their products. We spoke with some of the companies that use cobalt in lithium ion batteries, all acknowledged problems with the supply chain but said they require suppliers to follow responsible sourcing guidelines. Apple is an industry leader in the fight for responsible sourcing, but it says walking away from the DRC, quote, would do nothing to improve conditions for the people or the environment. Deborah Pata followed one young boy home from a mine to understand the challenges he faces as his family's provider. She joins us from Johannesburg. Deborah, good morning. Good morning. An estimated two-thirds of these children are not in school. They face a complicated set of barriers, including a weak economy and a corrupt government, but above all, poverty. Ziki Swazi has never been to school. He has no idea how to read or write, but he is an expert in washing cobalt. He is one of an estimated 40,000 children in the DRC getting paid a pittance to produce cobalt. Every evening, this 11-year-old returns home with a dollar or two to provide for his family. I have to go and work there, he told us, because my grandma has a bad leg and she can't. So you make the money for the family? There is no one to look after her, he said. I am the one who helps. It's a common story in the DRC. Kids need to work to survive. Welcome to the Cybertruck Unveil. We created an exoskeleton. <laughs> nice. Now hit the Cybertruck. Let's, uh, let's, let's show the glass demo. So first, first, this is regular glass. This is like normal glass, car glass. We want to show you what happens with normal car glass. Now I'll show you Tesla armor glass. Yeah. Yeah, so it's still, still there, I guess. Or Franz, could you try to break this glass, please? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Oh my fucking god. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. Yeah. <laughs> Should we try on the beer? <laughs> Sorry? Okay. It didn't go through. Let's so that was a, a plus side. Let's try the right. Okay. Try that one, really? Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh man, it didn't go through. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> eh, not bad. All right. Thank you. There you are, Mr. Uh, what's your name? Stanley Dowalski. Polish, eh? What a coincidence. Rudy Polanski, how are you? Hey, I like that watch, Stan. Got great shoes. Love them. Thanks. So Stan, you, uh, you want to buy this Buick Centurion, huh? Good choice. Smart man, you got good taste. I'll tell you something a lot of people don't have these days. Nice to see somebody finally walk on this lot who knows a good car when he sees one, I'll tell you. So, we, uh, we read it up? Yeah, well, actually, I was, I was just looking. Oh, hey, terrific. Terrific. That's what we're here for, Stan. Here you can look, browse, peek, touch, feel, taste, smell, do anything you want, take all the time you want. Nobody's going to pressure anybody around here, Stan. You know something, though, Stan? I really think you ought to buy this Buick. Mm -hmm. I think you ought to buy it today, right now. You want to know why? Because this Buick is you. The color is you. Look at it. This is your car. Stanley Dewoski is Buick Centurion Convertible. Now, I know what you're thinking, Stan. You're thinking, can I afford to buy a car like this? Huh? Am I right? Seriously, Stan, you can't afford not to buy a car like this, and I'm going to make it easy on you. When you add this whole thing up, taking into account inflation rate, insurance savings, gas savings, ease and comfort, you're going to come out $10,000 ahead after making this deal. Well, the prestige alone of owning a Buick Centurion Convertible can't even measure in terms of dollars and cents. Am I right? <laughs> you're going to love it, Stan. Trust me. Ah, uh, shit! There goes a perfectly good bumper sticker. Now, another thing that you are, are talking about is you, you sincerely think that we should go to Mars, like mm, that men and women should go to Mars. Yeah. 
Why do we want to go to Mars? It's uninhabitable. It's, it's very inhospitable, that's true. It is, like you have to be in like domes and everything, and you're just Initially, breathing. initially Initially? Domes. Yes. Really? How it's long a, before we could turn Mars into well, some place where we could live? It, it, it is a fixer-upper of a planet. Uh, so, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, at first you're gonna have to live in transparent domes, but eventually... Yes, yeah, so we're gonna be huffing each other's stank. Yeah, uh, but, but eventually you can transform Mars into an Earth-like planet. How would you do that? Uh, you'd, you'd warm it up. Just warm it up. If you with want, a blanket it, or with what? <laughs> how would you, how well, would you warm Mars up? You know, it's, it's there's a the long fast way, way away from the sun. It's the fast way uh, and the slow way. Okay. Uh, give, me, <laughs> give, me the, give me the fast way. The fast way is, is drop thermonuclear weapons over the poles. You're a super villain. <laughs> That's what a super villain does. Yeah. El dueño de la industria de carros eléctricos llamado Tesla. Es desde el 24 de julio de ese año. Seguramente muchos están informados, pero para las hermanas y hermanos que no se han informado, ¿qué dice? Dueño de empresas de autos eléctricos confiesa haber participado en el golpe. Una conversación, la red social Twitter. El dueño de la empresa de autos eléctricos Tesla de Estados Unidos, Elon Musk, entra en mis internet de ustedes, ahora mismo para verificar. Se delató, dijo haber participado en el golpe de Estado en Bolivia, noviembre de 2019, con el objetivo de apropiarse del litio. Le preguntan, ¿sabe que no era lo mejor para la gente? El gobierno de los Estados Unidos organizando un golpe de Estado contra Evo Morales en Bolivia para obtener el litio de allí. La respuesta... Nosotros vamos a realizar golpes donde queramos, lidien con eso. Atrevido, prepotente, va a ser golpes, todo por los recursos naturales, aquí todo por el litio. Pueden seguir leyendo, hermanas y hermanos, la nota de prensa, la respuesta del magnate de Vela, que la fábrica de automóviles eléctricos de Estados Unidos financió los promotores del golpe de Estado en Bolivia, entre ellos Carlos de Mesa, Luis Fernando Camacho, Marque Pumari, a los periodistas, a los policías militares. Ah, uh, dog, what publicity getter is here? <laughs> Howdy, Miss Jane. Sure, I'm glad to see you. Oh, thank you, Jethro. I stopped off the television station to show them my stuff. And they treated me like I was some kind of a nut. I hope you took Ellie to the bank first. Heck yeah. I was glad to get rid of her and her critters. Miss Jane... Critters? Yeah, she took along a whole mess of them, just so she wouldn't be lonesome. Miss Jane... Well, boy, uh, how did that set with Mr. Drydale? I don't know. I dropped Ellie and the whole mess off out front. Yeah, I better give him a call. Uh, excuse me. Oh, uh, boy, uh, Miss Jane's got an idea for you. Are you gonna help me get some of that glory? Well, frankly, it depends upon how well you can sing. Sing? And hopefully accompany yourself on the guitar. I'm gonna have a hard enough time just eating lunch. <laughs> Didn't know what you had to tell you? I'm gonna be wearing these here wings when I get up there. I'm flapping and swooping around. Jesus, you don't need a gimmick like this. Well, I'm gonna need something when these skyrockets burn out. You're going to fire rockets? Well, yeah. Oh, just to get me started. Now, ah, spread these here wings. Jethro, dear boy, these are just cheap attention getters. And if you have talent, you don't need them. I don't? Not at all. It may take you a little longer to reach the top, but when you hit, you'll be a much bigger smash. <laughs>
Chief George Jetson. His boy, Al Wright. Daughter, Judy. Jane, his wife. himself into space. He's on his way to the launching pad now for the countdown. Talk to you later, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> well, so long, Grady. <laughs> T-minus ten seconds and count. What are you doing on my table? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Get two, it. one, zero. Blast off! Ain't that pretty? I wish it was night. I think the boy's headed back, Granny. Yeah, he'll be here in plenty of time for supper. <laughs> when he calls a splashdown. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmwise presentation.